okay so uh, so the first algorithm uh, that comes into the mind of any individual when they are trying to learn cryptographic algorithm right? because uh, it's des that you have already heard des in 1970s introduced okay somebody has to uh, uh, standardize that right some standard body has to standardize then only will accept it obviously so nist national institute of standards and technology is a standard body which uh, has published this algorithm uh, des okay after uh, it's an output of a competition okay and later in 1990s end uh, there is an advanced version of uh, the algorithm that was world well known and being used now also no security issues for that it's aes advanced encryption standard so generally the name of these ciphers are not des and aes keep in mind it's not that so there was some other uh, name but uh, once it wins the competition you give an standard name it's called data encryption standard it gives just give a seal to that okay and after that there are some issues found with the size of the key with des which was a standard in 1970s 80s of course there are there is so much of controversy with the length of the password or key after that 1990s and a new standard has come again uh, the same standard body has called for proposal please submit design your own algorithms and submit we are ready to evaluate and finally round 1 round 2 round 3 final round if your algorithm still is resisting some common attack it will come it will come to the it will be called as or it is the winner of the competition and we'll we'll give a name to it it's called advanced encryption standard okay it's aes we call it aes okay so uh, so uh, that was that was about uh, simply symmetric key algorithms so whenever somebody asks about crypto algorithms that comes into mind is aes and des and they are the standard algorithms now nowadays people are using aes but des is out it's obsolete just not being used in any security protocols okay network security protocols or anywhere software offline wherever it is nobody are using it okay that is one uh, uh, side of cryptography it's simply uh, called symmetric key cryptography symmetric because the key is both sides the same okay i send something i take a password and you want the same password to read the message okay as i told in the beginning uh, privacy is very important not only today even many years before so that's why we come up uh, go for designing new algorithms is that okay so uh, now after this this modern uh, uh, this for this particular generation now from 1970s or 16 you can see the digital communication right mostly you can see the communication has advanced a lot okay and most of the data that we have is online now right most of the data now this data that you transmit from one place to another place Uh, has to satisfy some needs okay security in terms of security so so i can call it as service maybe i'll call it as a security services uh, because i have some data i need to transmit from my uh, device maybe it is a laptop or uh, it is a mobile or whatever to another laptop or maybe mobile or device or maybe whatever is on the other side so obviously there is a requirement a demand of a service from my side because i don't want some of my data to be Uh, read by somebody else okay the data can be anything i can be an institution i can be an individual i can be a bank okay it can be anything right i can be individual also i can be an, a company or whatever but still data is data some data is very important nobody else has to be uh, nobody should be able to read it is that okay so obviously some services will come out so i just listed some services before we go into understanding because this session is uh, uh, related with uh, authentication authentication the same english word we know what is authentication okay we are using the same terminology authentication okay authorization all these terms we already know it's english frequently used phrases right so so this uh, uh, authentication and some uh, how do you provide authentication for the data that you want to transmit from one place to another place so right everything you are communicating online the data is flowing from one place to another being transmitted from one place to another place the first thing what we require is nobody should read my data that is the first demand right or my first request that you uh, give to some some particular technical guy is that correct what i am saying nobody should read because your data should be private okay uh, and once that is satisfied maybe because of some algorithms that is existing in literature like what in the previous sessions you have learned des aes i will only use these two algorithms des aes there are many algorithms let's not go into that because they are standard algorithms i'll use so if i want nobody to read my data i'll i'll just give a terminology to that 
I call, then uh, I have enough confidence that nobody is going to read my data. So I'll call, I'll, I'll say that that service, I'll call it as uh, confidentiality. That is the service. So immediately I ask my technical guy, please provide confidentiality to my data so that I can transmit over the internet or whatever, LAN or WAN or whatever. Then immediately I can say that please provide message confidentiality. Then immediately my technical guy will take uh, some algorithms existing, secure algorithms. Okay, DS is obsolete, I will not take that, my technical guy will not take. Obviously, uh, AES will be chosen and some other variants of uh, AES or maybe some other uh, secure algorithms, block safer present algorithms which are secure will be taken into consideration, will be implemented and whichever data I am transmitting from my laptop uh, through the ethernet or wireless whatever, the data inside my laptop will be processed in such a way that it will be converted to some other data, okay, which is not uh, intelligent, it has no meaning at all. So that will be transmitted over the internet and for that what we are using, obviously we are using uh, DS and AES, nothing else, right, DS, AES, not DS presently but AES for sure, even presently AES is being used. So no uh, considerably important uh, vulnerabilities are found or security issues are found with the AES algorithm till now, nothing like that. But if you have a, a very bad implementation of AES, that will cost you a lot. So to implement AES is also important, it is not that the algorithm is secure, okay. That is one thing. So I will call that particular service as message confidentiality, okay. This is known to you in the previous session, we have already, uh, we have already gone through that, right, message confidentiality. So once that is over, again we are in the digital world, transmitting data over the internet. So that is not enough. Now suppose I am sending a message to you, what is the guarantee that I am sending it? One thing is sure that nobody is reading it, nobody is reading it, you are very happy that nobody is reading. But to the other side, to the other end, when he receives the data, there should be a surety, right, sure because everything is online, you are not seeing anybody else, okay, we do not know who is sitting on the other side, who is receiving it, okay. Or the receiving person should know that whether I am sending it or not, particularly when you do some banking transactions, you know, or when you get a link from the uh, Flipkart when you are trying to buy a product, what is the guarantee that the payment you are giving to Flipkart or some, somebody else, okay, or you are buying the product from Flipkart or some other site. And so, and so this, or this, this, to solve this you require a service, a new service I will introduce here uh, when you are online trying to transmit some data. So I will call it as uh, uh, authentication, authentication, okay. So again uh, before uh, I go into authentication, I will also call something as message integrity, message integrity, you know integrity means what, right, we always the same English word, we have to keep our integrity and so on, right. So uh, whatever happens, I will not change my things, I will be correct and so on, right, whatever is my policy, I will go accordingly, so which nothing will influence me, something like that, right. So obviously when the message is going over the internet, so if I am providing something called message integrity to the message, so the message is coming out of the laptop. I provide confidentiality, so nobody will read it. After that, another type to that message that is called message integrity. That means nobody will change the message. So if you are trying to change the message, even one bit of message, so it will make an alarm. It's not alarm actually, but virtually what I am saying is one, once it reaches to the other side, the recipient will understand something wrong has happened. It is not the actual message. Some changes has been made, okay. First thing is he understood nobody read this because of AES being used. Confidentiality is achieved. But he should be sure that yes, a bit is not modified, even a bit, a smallest a measure of information, no, bit, bit is the smallest measure of information, okay. So even a bit is not modified, if that is the case, then again you have to come up with some methodology, a procedure, which you have to apply to the message which is ready here to be transmitted, right. You, you apply that ma particular methodology which is called message integrity. So there are uh, some functions or methods that you can use to provide message integrity. So a little more so, message integrity is fine, that means nobody is able to change, if somebody changes, there is an alarm, right, so authentication has not come till now, nobody can read it, nobody can change it, people can change it, but I can identify something has gone wrong, I do not know who changed it, but I know that somebody, something, some, some bits are changed in the message, so this is fine. Now after that, the next demand what I do is, sir it is fine that uh, I, nobody can read this message, I'm con I have the confidence, very nice. Uh, some changes has been made during the transit. It can be intentional changes, it can be the changes happen due to the uh, some noise in the channel, right, some cuts or whatever, breakages of the uh, wires or maybe uh, the signals getting 
issue right because of the thunder strikes or whatever the temperature high temperature and so on okay interferences and so on because of that also the recipient will get something else this can be because of anything but we are only considering the case where intentionally somebody has changed the message so we can still find third one is the authentication whether authentication as again i am demanding i should know who has transmitted the message to me who who is the person on the other side so again there should be when i say who is the person obviously i should get some identity of that person also right here comes the identity of the person who is sending to sending it to me a very nice application i'll tell you whenever somebody says authentication online transactions etc what comes into our mind we'll never forget about this particular service authentication okay uh, the client server communication no so like your browser communicating with uh, whatsapp server or maybe uh, google server or maybe or any other web pages no will have a server running background right so that client server communication uh, obviously there is a requirement of authentication okay now i'll split the authentication the authentication is a very important service since we are on online obviously right so that's very important so uh, uh, so i will divide that i'll split the authentication into two parts one i'll say that that's a new terminology nowadays one thing is data being authenticated okay and an entity being authenticated entity means entity is who is sitting on other side okay user being authenticated okay user or entity or whatever i give the name okay so sometimes on the other side it will not it will not be a user it, it will be a program which is automatically running on the other side okay so it has to authenticate to me sometimes user will not sit okay so it has to authenticate to me or a user may be sitting he has to authenticate to me it can be a server it has to authenticate it to me so these are all users or entity or whatever now there is a, another split of authentication which is called data authentication okay data authentication in the sense that the data uh, is it's not a little bit different from message integrity when the data is i am a recipient of the data i'll first of all see that yes this is encrypted nobody has read it confidentiality achieved to the other person fine it is received now message integrity is also fine because i am verifying whether anything has gone wrong any bits has been changed message integrity is fine now i want to know whether data has come from that particular ip address from that particular source okay so the data once reaches the recipient he will say that hey i am the so and so person coming from so and so place understood what i am saying but entity authentication is little bit different where now the data reaches and after that you have to get a confirmation that yes on the other side who has sent the message okay from the other side from the particular institution you do not know who has sent okay now it's clear that from this ip address that particular message has come but are you sure yes from that ip address who has sent it whether saurav has sent or myself prema has sent or somebody else arvind has sent we do not know but ip address is fine i understood from where it has come so data has authenticated see see the uh, source uh, ip address or whatever see a methodology that is being used to say that yes i am coming from this particular source so believe me the data says then the receiver says that yes i believe you come inside now after that what the receiver says is you want to know uh, who is the person has sent this data not in all applications but in some application it is required okay so uh, specifically you want who is that person sometimes not required right because sometimes a group of people are authenticated any one of them can send the message it's not required that who exactly in the group has sent the message okay it depends upon the scenario the application so in some situations exactly it is required who is that person okay okay is it sbi.com or it is pin card and so on that server has to authenticate to you to your browser actually it is happening knowingly or unknowingly okay your browser uh, gets an information that yes this is the person sending uh, the information we are getting connected to this particular source so uh, we understood from this slide the first slide that there are some services that is provided by uh, crypto crypto services one is confidentiality this memes are very important terminology is very important for us okay so uh, uh, message confidentiality message integrity i add message to all of this uh, message uh, uh, authentication this data data or message whatever so data authentication entity authentication also now first question comes in so very fine you have put all these things here now can you give some applications of this it will be nice when you see the applications of different uh, services okay so nowadays message confidentiality only application is very difficult to find its uh, 
it is always not uh, uh, suggested or recommended to you, uh, build an application which only provides message comprehension. Okay, you always uh, uh, keep the data integrity service. Sometimes data authentication service also integrated with uh, to this particular application where both message on message confidentiality and uh, message integrity. Sometimes data authentication also is put together. It's like for example, disk encryption, right? Offline it is. You have a software which encrypts your disk, which encrypts a partition, which encrypts a file. It's nice, right? Some sometimes when you encrypt a file, I'll show that in the coming slide. Okay, practically I'll show you. I'll suggest a software also which you can use for encrypting your files in the uh, laptop system, okay, computer and so on. So that's always important uh, that your files, it can be anything, right? It can be video files, large video files, images, or it can be text, okay, or it can be anything that you have generated, okay, programs or whatever, EXEs and so on. So all these files, you can encrypt it. Once you encrypt it, uh, it, it is again an, another file, encrypted file. So the original file is there, the encrypted file is there. Now you can delete the original file. Okay, now very important if you used a very nice cryptographic algorithm for doing this, it is gone. So, there is a password associated with this uh, generation of encrypted data which the cryptographers call it as a cipher text. Okay, cipher text, it is a text only, uh, generally we call it as a text. So, but uh, it is a cipher text. Cipher is an algorithm which is used for generating cipher text. So, a meaningful message converted to something which has no meaning at all, okay. If you are using a good secure uh, cryptographic algorithm, then this is true. Otherwise from the ciphertext, I can get some meaningful messages sometimes, get some distribution from which I will be able to uh, find which algorithm has been used and which key was used for uh, doing this whole process. Now keep in mind always one thing I would like to say that, so if you are going to design some algorithms, cryptographic algorithms, okay, it is not uh, important that you design an algorithm and keep it secret like DES, AES, they are all not secret, they are all public, right. Anybody can use and AES is public from 1998, so it is from 20, 23, 25 years, it is publicly available, till now no vulnerabilities, maybe very uh, significantly important vulnerabilities are not found in AES, so that we can, anybody is encrypting using AES, they give me the ciphertext, I cannot read, I cannot understand, even I cannot break it, I, can, I cannot find the corresponding message. I cannot even find the password used for doing this process in AES. Okay, the password of AES because generally I am using password in cryptographic community people use call it as key. So they measure the password in terms of bits, okay. It is called 128 bits, okay or 256 bit and so on, it is variable length. So some if AES is using, if you are using AES with 128 bit key to encrypt your video data or audio data in the laptop, okay obviously it is very difficult to do the reverse, you will not be able to get the message. You will not be able to find the right key also, if you get the key it is over, okay. And what I want to tell you is the algorithm used for doing this is public. You can buy uh, uh, by general rule you can say that the algorithm is public, only my password is secret. Something like no need to keep the laptops and everything secret, right or maybe your big computer secret, okay. You can access but the password is only with me, something like this, okay. So the security should be with the password or maybe the key. Security should be like that finding password is, finding the key is difficult even the algorithm is public. This, this is the case for every uh, application, the algorithm is public, okay. So uh, uh, only if you can just uh, exclude the case for military applications. So they don't give, don't, they don't give the uh, algorithms also public, it is proprietary only. So otherwise uh, you cannot say that see my algorithm whatever I design is secret so you cannot break. No, somehow the other way the algorithm will come out. There will be some internal uh, people, uh, maybe they are reasoning and going from that company, they will obviously will uh, keep this algorithm out. They will tell this is the design, I know, understood. But still if the design is out, so this happened in literature many number of times. Okay, there was a uh, screen cipher RC4, it was initially, uh, it was used in uh, network protocol, okay. So it was for many, many, many years, it was uh, secret proprietary, but later it came out. Somewhere in the website it is published. Okay, so the security should depend upon the password, the key in other words in cryptographic language. So uh, that is uh, the thing I want to tell you. Now we will go into more understanding about uh, uh, authentication and what type of uh, methods or functions we are using to, uh, uh, to provide this particular service. So if you have any doubt with respect to uh, 
these services you can ask me i'm going to the next slide okay so the hash functions are used for providing one of the one of the uh, functions used for providing integrity message integrity is hash function of course uh, hash functions can be used for providing uh, entity authentication also not completely but you can use uh, for providing entity authentication as a part you can use one function okay for providing entity authentication uh, message integrity and so on okay but not message confidentiality and the previous sessions you have heard other symmetric or asymmetric ciphers are used for that okay so uh, this is one of the classical ciphers just i thought i'll show it to you okay uh, world war ciphers or whatever world war 1 and 2 and so on okay something like a typewriter you have okay some physical devices electromechanical uh, devices okay which was used many years before uh, it was cracked and uh, some issues were found with these type of devices and messages were read from the cipher text okay these were very old type of uh, devices and the technologies used instead also is very old just get a feel i'm just uh, showing you here so you can see that there is a message and there is a cipher text on other side so uh, so block ciphers and string ciphers keep this in mind only just i'll quickly go to the next slide so when i was cryptography somebody is talking about that you will have a block ciphers one part and stream ciphers another part okay these are these are all coming into the category of uh, symmetric ciphers which was i, I was telling you no, the world war 1 to 60s 70s before the advent of asymmetric uh, asymmetric key crypto system which was introduced by arvind right before that only this type of uh, algorithms were existing so few ciphers i have put here there are some standard ciphers so stream ciphers we call it as rc4 trivium grain or even secure ciphers lightweight ciphers okay uh, which is existing in the internet with the code and everything you it is available in the internet you can see aes bs is obsolete present uh, it's the name present is a ciphers name actually okay it's a lightweight cipher lightweight in the sense uh, uh, the cipher can be implemented in very power constrained and memory constrained devices okay that type of devices are more right sensors and so on nowadays so uh, present is a lightweight cipher blowfish is a very old cipher so simply to get a feel i have put some ciphers here so uh, so to so we this session is uh, about authentication right data authentication integrity message integrity and so on so here this hash functions and uh, some hash functions i have displayed here you can see here uh, md5 is a hash function char2 is a hash function right some terminologies maybe if you are uh, listening for the first time it, it looks odd but it's okay but uh, these are some of the standard uh, i'll show you in the next slide also md5 and sha2 and sha2 is secure even today it is secure people are using it in the sense you can find in many uh, software security software okay applications and you can find in uh, many being used in many network security protocols and so on okay uh, mac function so this mac function MIC is message authentication code, not that MAC related with your computer's physical address. Not that it is message authentication code, IP and MAC. Not that it is. Okay. So message authentication code is the terminology used for providing integrity to the message or data. Sorry, yeah, authentication to the data, o authentication to the data authentication. I am talking about right, data authentication like entity authentication. So this will provide that. So MAC message authentication, message authentication function. So just at least keep these terminologies in your mind whenever you come across this at least you will recall that okay i have heard this somewhere here so it will be easy for you uh, to in quickly go through the whatever uh, document you have you will understand very quickly okay so you can see here this uh, uh, hash function there is an input there is an output you can see that on the top so hash functions will obviously take uh, an input of any size one so i'll uh, converge this discussion telling that hash functions will provide message integrity and data authentication also that's the objective so uh, you can see the output of hash function i'm calling it as uh, uh, not working yeah not visible over the output i'll call it as hash sum or checksum okay call it as checksum i'll show it directly in one of the web pages or you can call it as uh, hash value Okay, or you can call it as message digest 
okay. Uh, that means what is happening you can see here the input to the same hash function in the yellow color they are of different sizes. You can ask sir why are you giving different sizes you can see there it is fox then the red fox runs uh, across the eyes, the red fox walks across the eyes, so small difference the second and third but still the first and second is in length wise it is different. I can even put a 1 GB of data there which is in it, which acts as an input to the hash function 1 GB or 2 GB it does time it will take some time for uh, processing and getting an output but always you can see that the output is fixed you can see that right simple example has function the output is always fixed how many letters you can find there 1 2 3 so 8 letters so each le each letter will uh, take 4 bits so 8 into 4 32 bits right so the first output is 30 so why it's always nice we uh, encode everything into bits and we discuss because everything we are processing in bits we are representing in bits measuring in bits so it will be always nice you encode anything into bits universally so discuss so i am saying here even though symbols are there the hash sum is it is simply 32 bits 32 bits 32 bits so whatever input is there it is a fixed output so i can conclude here hash function is a process it is a process is a method where it takes any input data of any size and any input because I am only giving here text but I can give video also that I am dictating here video I can give uh, audio data I can give images okay but you have to suitably encode that okay and then uh, process it and I can give text like this of any size and then always it gives you a fixed output here it is 32 bits now this is the case now there is uh, 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 one more thing I would like to say so I put this uh, particular one here because I just want to show you, uh, uh, you heard about SRTP uh, protocol, uh, this is uh, RTP protocol extended to SRTP with the S implies secure there. This is one of the protocols where we use this protocol for uh, <coughs> as a uh, transmitting messages over network, okay. So live data communication like you know uh, VOIP, you know Skype, VOIP and so on. So uh, just I want to show you here that you can see this. Uh, payload you see the payload here on the top that is RTP a payload RTP header UDP header IP header and so on okay but uh, where the message is actually there it is actually RTP payload there is the message and remaining all is simply the metadata metadata related with the message now actually I need to encrypt this right I need to encrypt this RTP payload so here there is no encryption nothing is there simply is put like this there is RTP payload you transmit this particular packet this one and this will give some information about this and then you get the message on the other side but yes RTP is simply the secure S for secure the security is added to that like authentication message confidentiality integrity and everything is put inside this this is one example of that where all these services are provided here to show you that just I put here okay so I will show you another service also so another application also where these services are used. Now you can see the same protocol has been changed here where I am encrypting the payload portion okay and I am authenticating data authentication not entity authentication. The data what I am collecting here is RTP header some information about this data RTP header and the payload also I am taking payload can be of any size maybe in, in bytes or whatever okay. So the RTP header and the payload together is being authenticated that is a different process keep in mind that means if it is authenticated I will get some AUTH some data called auth okay. So this auth will be containing some information about this and this combinedly. Now when this is transmitted on the other side okay now he will take this okay or he will try to construct the same thing using this RTP header and RTP payload and encrypted data. So from this data he will try to construct the same thing. So there is some secret because when you are doing encryption there is a password or key is required. So the recipient also will do the same process and he should get the same auth AUTH. So this will be used for authenticate if it is verified obviously nothing has been changed inside this okay. But this can be read by anyone it is only authenticated you can see this line here only this portion is this payload is only encrypted but this is put into authentication process why because 
sometimes the header has some details which it, it should not be changed. Some people will also put this extra this data also into the authentication process because they do not want somebody to change the IP address or something like that, ok. But they can read anybody can read any router can read the IP address because the routers are sending the data from one place to another place. The router should read, read the data and see oh this is the IP address oh you are going there it will route. So, it should read you cannot encrypt those sort of information right destination address and so and so. So, but an authentication has to be so if somebody can change it so that should not happen immediately somebody changes the IP address or some related metadata on the other side somebody should understand right they say I have changed it it is wrong and so on. I, I should not change the uh, source address the recipient will get a lot of issues right. So, obviously that has to be authenticated. So, in the whole process this whole data some part of the data should be only authenticated some ca some can be encrypted because whichever is to be kept private it should be encrypted remaining are simply authenticated. This is the whole thing happening in uh, most of the security protocols. So, uh, we are discussing about the hash function hash function ok. So, I will go to the next slide yeah you can ask. These are designed and available uh, publicly. We can choose our own hash functions, which are standard hash functions, which I'll display and show it to you. Or we can design our own hash functions if we know the techniques of designing. But always not suggested if you are not a professional to design. Uh, we had our own designs, but not recommended if you are not a professional in making the uh, or designing that particular hash function. So some standard hash functions are there. One of them I told you SHA2. Okay. Same like DES and AES, there was a competition. Uh, requesting for proposals all over the world and then round 1, round 2, round 3 and SHA2 is uh, one of the algorithm that name was given SHA2, its actual name was not there ok. Some others uh, design idea was finally published as a standard with secure hash algorithm ok. 2, 2 means it is a version 2, there was one also but now it is obsolete uh, many uh, agencies, companies, institutions told that no we are not do not please nobody use SHA1 in any of your softwares ok or maybe any of your uh, protocols and so on because of some issues with that some security issues and so on. So, but SHA2 is secure even today it is secure to an extent. Now, the other thing is again NIST National Institute of Standard and Technology they again conducted a competition very recently, recently in 2015 it was completed. Again third version of SHA algorithm again competition was conducted competition 1 uh, round 1 round 2 round 3 and the final candidate was called as SHA3 SHA3 ok. So, uh, and uh, but SHA2 is still secure ok SHA2 has some variance inside that. Now, uh, see here I told you this is the hash function right I told you this is 32 bit whatever input you give it is 32 bit that is interesting. Now, if for SHA2 what will be the output of this that is the question whatever input you give what is output here in bits. I will tell you for SHA 0 there is SHA 0 also the first and first version which did not exist for more time immediately SHA 1 came because of some issues with the design ok. So, uh, SHA 1 is SHA 0 and SHA 1 the output size is 160 bits 160 bits. So, whatever you give here whether 1 GB of data you will get 160 bits understood what I am saying and this is only a one way function if it is a cryptographically, cryptographically strong uh, crypto, uh, hash, hash algorithm this algorithm has a special property called you can only find like this you give an input you got this now you ask the input output who is your input you will say I do not know understood. Now you take this function force it back it will not give you this output understood what I am saying and now you can ask so, this is this the domain of this this is like a function right. So, many inputs, but the output is only uh, countable right you are fixing 32 bit means how many out 32 bits will be there. So, 2 raise 32, but how many inputs are there then you told said not 2 raise 32 it is infinite you can so many any video any audio of any size and so on so many right. So, obviously you can say that when you invert this when I am going on doing this process there will be more than one input having the same output. Because input is so many, output is less. How do you how do the inputs share the output? They have to share some common output, right? Only 2 raise 32, 32 bit. Understand what I am saying? So, that is obvious, 
but the problem is now finding when you invert this actually there are hundreds and lakhs of inputs which will give you this those inputs when you put here you can find the same output but the problem is it is it's not that you cannot find you cannot invert it's not like that it's computationally difficult that word is very important it's computationally difficult to invert and find at least one fellow but among them one is the correct one which i use fox is the correct answer but there will be so many inputs which has no meaning at all dollar x y z something like that and if that also you put as an input you will get the same as the same that you put here like fox what you want but you do not know finding at least one of them in the hundreds and thousands it will take so much maybe 10 years or so. maybe it depends upon your computing facility so it's computationally difficult to find by the time you find people will change the hash function they'll change the application they change the data by the time the data is not required for you right understood what i'm saying you want to decrypt and read some message after 10 years you're getting who wants that understood what i'm saying you can ask it. yeah so here there is nothing like a, a, a confidentiality or something because encryption algorithm is only for uh, taking a data 1 gb of data you process it's also a function right something like this you write here encryption function that's it not, nothing different but it takes a 1 gb of data particularly symmetric type of i'm talking about okay and you will get the same size data 1 gb it should give you 1 gb it's not compass or expand let us assume initially like that okay so 1 gb encrypted so maybe 1 gb of data you will get here 1 gb of data the difference is this fellow has some meaning for us okay english or whatever language but this does not have any meaning it's a, it looks like random data some scribble okay and from this reading this for so much time you will not be able to understand what is this and why does it happen because of the function you are using here and the type of key the key you are putting here right the key is also required now you can there you can do the reverse now if you want this one you want to get this one from this that means in the case of encryption the ciphertext 1 gb you give as an input reverse it and get back reverse should happen there otherwise you will not be able to read the recipient will not be able to read but when you do the reverse the reverse only will happen when that secret is known to you encryption function but here we don't want the reverse that is the way i am constructing the concept of hash function understood what i am saying nobody should be able to reverse why because so this is something like this output i am calling it as checksum or it is a tag tag i am putting a unique tag it should be for every message a unique thing i am putting now for example uh, you have an image you want to transmit to your friend let us assume an image of large size you encrypted using encryption algorithm what do you get on the other side again of the same size data you get which has no meaning that image has no meaning at all okay now keep it aside that is encrypted image understood now what i am doing is the same message same image i am sending to the hash function same image which i encrypted what will happen it will give me 32 bits it will not give me again another same size of data it will give me a 32 so this 32 bit now you give another image it will not give the same 32 bit Okay, it's difficult to, use, to find another image which will give the same previous 32. It will take some time for you to find. That is my security here. Okay, so this 32 I will consider it as the identity or the tag corresponding to the image. So when an image is given, I got a checksum here, and that is my that is a, that I will call it as the identity of the image. Whenever the image changes, its output changes here. So for every image, there is a unique 32 bit. That it is very small, generally we use 160 bits or 2 qubits bit, okay, so that it will not repeat quickly. 32 will repeat, 2 is 32 only, you know. So 2 is 32 images, if you use one image, two images will surely collide. Two images will go to same output here. So if it is, uh, I am taking 160 bit as an output for the hash function, at least to collide, you have to do 2 raised to 160 times, you have to do this process, right? So that is not possible, feasible or not feasible, whatever. So, uh, so that's why I call every data that I encrypt a message, I can create an identity for that or maybe a tag for that in simple words tag. So take the message, encrypt it, generate a tag for this and attach to this message and send. Is that fine? Now this tag is unique, this combination no? this message and tag is unique. This combination is unique. If you change the tag, then this message tag will not tell you. 
valley once it reaches to you what do you do how do you how do you uh, find that this this is the exact tag of the particular message how do you know when you send the image encrypted image which has no meaning and the tag to me what i'll do you know i'll take the encrypted image i'll decrypt it i'll get the original image understood then when i get the original image i'll again apply this hash okay what i get i get the tag the same tag and the received tag and the tag i generated i'll verify whether they are same or not if they are same then verified that means while the encrypted image is during the transit of the encrypted image nobody modified it that's the thing if somebody modified the encrypted image or they modified the tag it will not tally here understood what i'm saying is it right two things being transmitted to me one is the encrypted image and the tag if one of them being modified let us assume encrypted image is modified one bit when you decrypt it you will not get the original image if you don't get the original image again you hash it you will not get the actual tag understood tag will not verify is it clear what i am saying so this is the way like you go to uh, uh, supermarkets no every product has a unique tag attached with it the product is not identified based upon its what the product details no okay not only product details some tag is required the tag is of course generated from the product details only take all the product details compress it and put a small whatever information like tag like thing okay based upon that you will identify that of course tags will repeat but the number of products there okay if not so large or maybe uh, finding two different products having the same tag will take one day or two day for you by the time supermarket is closed and you are out understood what i'm saying so it's completely difficult of course tags will repeat for the product understood what i'm saying so uh, something like this uh, just i took an example so that i can make you understand okay now very important and nice example of hash function so this is uh, this is open source see uh, somebody want to uh, sir we are listening so much of theory but uh, can you suggest or we have to go and write a program for uh, write a program for using uh, software which encrypts our data can i get a feel of encrypting a data using aes or some other symmetric ciphers so this is an example for so you can use very importantly somebody says that sir this is a software which will encrypt your data immediately don't agree with that or don't accept or don't take it to be granted because so uh, if it is an open source then it is fine this is an open source software we do not know what is inside that really that algorithm is existing or not you do not know i am i am scripting it i am giving you the exe how do you know that really a is inside understood what i am saying or i am using only 32 bit key inside wrong implementation intentional intentionally i am putting a wrong thing inside the 32 bit key only i am putting inside so obviously i can able to easily read your data because 32 bit i can track okay so uh, you have to use the software whether encryption or authentication whatever software is you have to get it from some trusted third party trusted right now the best thing is always this open source because you will have the whole uh, code with you you can verify you can go inside and verify everything Okay, maybe you can tweak accordingly and use it. That's what I'm saying. Some updates also you will get. This is Veracrypt open source disk file encryption. Very nice and interesting. Very good interface it has. Okay, so uh, I'll show you one more uh, screenshot here. I'm using it for many years. Okay, previously it was called TrueCrypt. TrueCrypt. And later uh, it is renamed it as Veracrypt. Maybe a different team is updating. See, like this it comes. Very nice. Interface remains. What will happen? You know, it's something that technology here is something like on the fly encryption happening. On the fly encryption. You know what is on the fly encryption? When you have a ciphertext file, you click on that. It will decrypt. Of course, it will decrypt, but the decrypted thing will be in the RAM. Okay, it will be in the RAM. The key also will be inside the RAM, and the decrypted whole ciphertext. Which is you are which you are seeing as a plain text, no? It will be opened in a virtual uh, drive. You can create a drive. You can open it as a drive. It will ask like you like this. Uh, what is the drive you want? It will display all the drives which is not in your laptop. So this is my laptop. So it has no E, J, K, and so on. It has some C, so it did not display. I can take P, click on that, and I'll say mount. And obviously, you go to that uh, my computer. You can see that P, P drive. 
virtually it's not actually the pre drive system drive it's virtually open now all files decrypted whatever files you have put right that will be inside the p drive same like drive you can use like pen drive you connect there is a it looks like a drive right it's really connected thing similarly it looks like understood what i am saying very nice uh, interface it has now, even if you put that one encrypted file in a uh, one drive or somewhere google drive or somewhere when you open the google drive and click it understood that's a cipher text you are clicking open with where it lasts your password type the password if you lost the password it's gone nobody can get you back the data this is encryption it's not a joke because you are using very standard encryption techniques inside you are you are given the opportunity to choose the encryption algorithm aes example you can increase the uh, security also by choosing the number of rounds etc some options are available key is gone is gone understood it's gone that's it you can forget about that particular data is that clear what i'm saying so uh, it is something like quickly i'll show this because there is a very important uh, thing to be shown in the next slide so maybe uh, just a minute so i have a file here yeah this one so uh, if i create a if i create oh, you're not able to see maybe i can pull like this right oh okay there is no extension there is no uh, icon it's a cipher text h l l o okay now you can decide uh, what what is happening here is you are creating a container we, they call it as encrypted container you can decide 1 gb and encrypted container or 2 gb or 5 mb you can decide suppose 2 gb of encrypted container i am creating what will happen you know there is no data inside that it will create it it will push all random data inside that and make it a 2 gb of container that means when you create that container nothing is inside that random data only but why because it will occupy 2 gb of your space you are gone your uh, c drive or d drive wherever you are storing 2 gb of space is gone because that file is 2 gb but not, nothing no none, none of your files are inside okay but when you put 10 mb of file inside that container from the 2 gb some random data of 2 mb or 2 mb or 5 mb whatever it is that is deleted and this file will occupy there but still when somebody a person who is having access to the laptop he sees that file you only have 5 mb of file, word file inside that but when you see this this file this is actually whatever name i gave this is a 10 gb file example 10 gb or 2 gb it's a big file but this file inside it has only 5 mb file my actual file i'll show you that now so let me quickly open that so uh oh right click no, maybe there is open with right open with okay oh i'm sorry oh this one right so the important topic i need to tell regarding hash functions so quickly we we'll go so you can see this directory you install no? open with now that's a junk like file hello dot nobody can get any information from that give to anybody it's a cipher text it's a cipher text okay so see i'm going to open with this okay oh it's already opened uh, in e drive maybe i have opened it so i can uh, uh, dismount and again open so i have to think about the password i remember the password otherwise i cannot open and show it to you so before i go and try whether the password is correct or not i have chosen e right let me say oh e is here e has come it's, it's not the system drive it's a virtual drive e is that okay what i'm saying is clear right so i opened in e the file has come now click on this see here is the file now this file is this is only a, this is completely maybe a 2 gb of container this is a container created randomly inside randomly filled but it has only uh, 18 kb file so that means maximum up to 2 gb data i can fill then the random will, randomness random thing will go out and will fill with the data actually so how much data you put till it is 2 gb so for an external person seeing that he cannot understand how much data is inside he will still feel it is 2 gb or 10 gb or whatever 
So you have to choose the type of file also, NTF, NTFS or FAT or whatever. So the file system you have to choose based upon that, you can have bigger, bigger containers. It's easy, you can try by yourself so that you can get a feel of encrypting your message in real time. Okay, encrypt and put in one drive or wherever. And when you click that particular file from one drive or maybe Google Drive also, right click, open. You know what will happen? This file is coming and then getting decrypted in RAM, not in the Google Drive it is getting decrypted. Still the, somebody opens into your Google Drive and see it is only the ciphertext available there. Okay, the plain text is only in the RAM. That means what happens if you, if this computer is switched off, if I switch off and restart, my E drive is vanished. And that's what I'm saying. Again, I have to give the password and open it. So, uh, so I think this should be enough. I'll dismount. Okay, dismounted, it's gone. You can see here it is. Uh, very nice options are there. You can also, uh, the whole disk you can encrypt. Only the problem is while booting, you have to give the password. Okay. So, but very, very careful. Uh, once you forgot the password, it's gone. Understood? You can reinstall the system. I can use the system. Laptop is okay, but the data is gone. Complete data is gone. So, be careful while you do this. Okay. Instead of passwords, you can also choose the files here. Some image, your photo or image file or a text file. That can be a password. It will take a file as a password, you know. But the same file without any modification, you have to give it. Otherwise, it's gone. Okay, so many options, but nice to understand how the encryption works and choosing the encryptions and so on. Okay, so you can try. There are so much of uh, uh, step by step process given to you in the internet how to use this. This is not only the one open source software, there are many, but this uh, is nice and easy and very nice uh, interface it has. That's why I explained this one to you. Okay, so uh, see here I am just taking I mount, it is asking me a password. So it is asking you that you use key files. Do you have any file or you are using password or both? So I'm going to use uh, password only. So I'll type here, I think it is hello, the password. I did not change anything. If it is true, it will come. Otherwise, it will not. Take some time based upon your algorithm, you have to choose. I use AES. Actually, AES has some number of rounds, 12 rounds. You can increase the round to increase the security. But the problem is, it will take some time to get back the, the whole container it has to open, right? As a virtual drive I. If the password is wrong, after last little say that it's wrong. Something gone wrong. The password is wrong. Oh, it opened luckily. Yeah, only. The file name is also hello, right? So it opened. Now it will be as I drive. So it is here, I drive, right? The same file you can see here. And really, if you use the uh, very nice standard ciphers, AES or something like that, trust you cannot, nobody give this file to anybody. Hello, in the ciphertext, nobody can decrypt it. Very, very difficult. Understood. And that file is gone. If you forget the password, it's gone. You cannot go to any technical guy and ask him to decrypt. Not possible. Okay, because standard ciphers are being used. So uh, I thought I'll show that uh, exactly how to work, but lack of time, I'll go into the slides. Uh, yes, this one here. Yeah. And this is about uh, getting a feel of uh, open source software for encrypting your data. Okay, video data, whatever, please ask. Uh, a little bit loud. Dynamical? Uh, that option we have, we have to check. There are many options in the software. Like, even I, uh, there are some options like you can set a password. The container will have two parts one hidden part and the main part. Okay. When somebody is forcing you to ask you the password, you can give the uh, password one part where the very secret information is not there. The other, because nobody knows that two passwords are there for the same. So many options are there, but dynamically uh, changing or increasing the volume. I did not use that, but we have to check whether that is available. Or not. I think so, no, because after I did the whole thing, but still you can check it out. Okay. Uh, there are many options. When somebody is asking and forcing, please come on, tell the password. You will type the password, but the content is word files and simple. But there is another password when you give it, it will open the other part of the container. So that has something else. So, so that type of uh, applications, I don't know. Uh, maybe it, it will be useful for you or may not be. But uh, I think so that is also available. You can read that whole thing and just see. Okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah, the other one, what I want to tell you here is the very nice application of 
understanding all the crypto what we discussed from the morning. One is uh, asymmetric crypto system and Saurabh regarding the block ciphers and stream ciphers, symmetric crypto system that is ok. Authentication, message integrity, entity authentication or data authentication ok. All these, these things together are used in this single network protocol. It is previously SSL secure sockets layer protocol ok. Uh, presently it is TLS updated version TLS ok transport layer security protocol. This protocol is a protocol that connects a client and a server ok. You are trying to connect to SBA.com. Your browser, you are just typing in the browser right, sba.com. Obviously, it gets connected to the server. So, there is a communication happening between the server on the other side and the client with the help of your browser. You are the client, your laptop is a client, and your browser as an application is doing all the things for you. It is trying to communicate. So, there is a handshake happening when it takes some little time, right? One second or maybe less than one second. In between, what it is doing is this browser is asking, okay, fine, what is your identity? It is asking the servers. Understood what I am saying? So, as I told digital signatures, no? immediately the SBA server or Flipkart or whatever, Amazon or whatever services, it is immediately, uh, yes, I am SBA.com. What is the guarantee? This is very small starting handshake protocol. We are handshake, no? starting, we are trying to communicate. So, we give a handshake. So, tell me about your identity. Okay. Then, uh, for client side, client side uh, uh, generally the authentication may not be required, only credentials we give and get inside. So, it is an optional only client side authentication may be we can or we may not use ok. But server side is required to whom we are connecting whether it is real SBI or somebody else we do not know. So, I took an example this SBI and Flipkart ok to make you understand. So, <clears throat> so they this handshake I will ask please show your identity then the server says that yes I am so and so how what is that it is showing that is called digital certificate ok digital certificate where the uh, private key it will not be there, but public key of that particular uh, server will be existing in this. So, there are two keys private and public. Private will be with the uh, uh, secretly with the server, but public key will be here and some other information about the company or institution will also be here. And also who issued, who issued this certificate everything will be inside this. The moment the browser gets this, the browser verifies this. You do not know knowingly or unknowingly using it. It is a fraction of seconds it is happening based upon your uh, browser updated browser and so on. So, browser is already saving so many certificates in the hierarchical order. So many certificates up to the uh, CA, root CA and so on. So many certificate authorities, certificates are kept here. The moment the uh, SBA server is sending the certificate, it will verify from the list of services it has. Who signed it? Did, is the certificate signed by one of the certifying authorities who is with me in the browser? Yes, it is. It will verify. It was verified, then immediately, yes, we understood your SBA.com. Now, let us communicate. Understood what I am saying? Understood, right? So, everything is inside this protocol. So, if you are able to understand this uh, SSL, previously called SSL 3.0 version, it is attacked. Okay, now there are some issues with SSL 3.0 and updated version TLS, TLS 1.2, 1.3, and so on. So, those that particular protocol you, have, you understand, the whole thing is understood by you. You understood the network protocol, okay, you understood all sort of crypto services. Every crypto service is inside the single protocol, very easily understandable. Nice also for you to learn there. Okay, uh, you can try for understanding it, implementing it. Okay, so and so on. But just I put here so that uh, you will understand something like this. So uh, this one, uh, the message integrated two things I want to tell you. It is a modification detection code, and there is something called. Before I go into this, I'll show you uh, lack of time, so I'll show you this one. A message authentication code that I already displayed. M A C, message authentication code, M D C, modification deduction code. What is the different difference is message authentication code or modification deduction code of a message, both has message, message, right? Of a message, they, they are simply a piece of data, 120 bit, 100 bit, 160 bit, whatever. It is actually the output of the hash function, you can say in simple words. But what is the difference is one has authentication, the word, another has nothing, right? The first one is simply modification deduction code. It is a code or a tag that is attached to the message. It only detects if there is something modified, nothing else. I will show that practically now. We have some half an hour. Okay. But the authentication, message authentication code, it not only detects, it also tells that from where the message has come. There is no authentication. 
that means some secret information about that particular user also should be inside this like key understood and say so i'll show you the uh, mdc modification direction code with the help of hash function so hash function can be used for providing mdc of course it can be used for providing mac also but i'll show you how uh, this uh, uh, modification direction code can be generated using hash function and that can be used for message integrity okay so we'll see that so uh, some of the hash functions so uh, we'll do one thing we'll uh, uh, i'll show you first of all how to generate output of a hash just give this one no what in the previous slide i showed you hash function it takes any message gives a fixed output that i am going to show you with the help of an application in your windows okay it is uh, windows powershell i'll use that small command i'll use i'll take any file in the system in this laptop and generate the hash tag or checksum and i'll also go to a website there are some websites where suppose for example a website which gives you a software which is open source that is assumed like so if i am trying to give you a software through my website i should also tell you that see this is the software only provided in this website you not get anywhere don't get it from anywhere else right i should tell that also so what i'll do is this example vlc player or any anything else like ubuntu or whatever Say, let's take Ubuntu downloading is difficult. I'll take VLC player from 32 MB. So when you are going to download the VLC player in open source, then what I'll do is I will find the hash of this particular software. Hash of maybe SHA2, okay, or, or any other algorithm. It doesn't matter. MD5 or whatever. So SHA2 of this VLC player is equal to the output of SHA2 is 256 bits, one particular version, okay. So immediately I'll get a 256 bits corresponding to this VLC player. Okay, then I will display that 256 bit in the website below. That's what I'm saying, right? So the VLC player is there. It's a SHA-2 of VLC player software is output also I put here. Okay, 256 bits. I'll put in the hexadecimal format because 256 bit means so huge, right? It runs so much big. Hexadecimal means only four bits becomes one character. So 256 by four, that many characters are enough. That's why people use hexadecimal characters, easy representation. Okay. Now, anybody is going to download what they do. Or maybe uh, she is giving me the VLC play software. Sir, please use this. Who knows? Sometimes uh, that particular software is maliciously infected by something else. Maybe one KB of something is attached with this software, which is such a bit. Okay. When you see the weight and the size of that, there is no much difference. But some script is added to that. We do not know maliciously or whatever. Then I should know whether this software is the genuine one downloaded from that or maybe attached something else. What I will do is I will find the hash of whatever software she gave with SHA2 only. I get some 126 bit. I'll go to the website and download that and see the hash of that. Hash is already they published it, right? Right? I'll see both of them. They are different. Version wise, also they are same. If they are different versions, I agree. Okay, the content will be different and obviously the SHA output will be different. Sorry, the hash output will be different. Okay, understood what I'm saying? She tell she she told that it is the latest version. She is download. Then obviously latest version is in the website, and they also put the checksum out publicly with the SHA2. I should get the same checksum, right? If it is not modified, even a bit should not be modified. That's what I'm saying. So so I will just show you. It is uh, PowerShell. Just search PowerShell in Windows. Get this. Is that okay? So. You are able to see this, or you want me to magnify it? Magnify it. Is this okay? This is fine, right? This is fine. So it's not required to go and write this D column and so on. You can execute from there itself. Okay. So I need some software. So what I'll do is, so uh, 
<coughs> so I'll take so the command is simply get file hash it's not case sensitive you can use anything file hash okay but which file I should take so I'll do one thing I can I, again I cannot I have to write the path here I can put in okay quotes write the path that, that's it get get hash and that path is enough no need to tell the hash function also because by default it takes sha secure hash algorithm 2 version 2 that means there are so many outputs it gives so in four types of sha2 is there I'll take SHA-256, that means 256 output will come. Understood what I'm saying? Done? SHA-256, 256 bit output. Okay. So that is the default. If you want a specific hash algorithm, then you have to write type or dash algorithm and algorithm. What algorithm? SHA-2 or SHA-3 or whatever. Okay. So we'll see here. Uh, instead of that, what, what I'll do is let me uh, see what are inside this. Okay. This, I have listed all the files and folders inside uh, a D. Now what I'll do is again, I will change the directory to maybe PhD. You can see there, right? PhD. Uh, you are not able to see that. Uh, PhD there. So I'm writing here PH. I think here it is case sensitive. Okay. Now I'm in PhD. I list it. What I'm going to do? I'm trying to hash using a hash algorithm. You can choose any hash algorithm of your choice. Standard hash algorithms are available in the Windows. Okay, you have to update the Windows always. Standard hash algorithm already implemented in Windows, you can use that through PowerShell or maybe any other command prompt. So uh, what I'm going to do, I, will, I have listed, now I'll do get, easy for me to read and type, no? See, I can see the files, only two files inside. So get file hash, okay. You can type directly the file name, no quotes are required, but since there is a space, no? Uh, Shivanand underscore, so space, you see, that's why the space is a problem, it will not detect. So put in quotes, it will be like a single entity. So it is SHI, B A N A N D, case sensitive, okay. Otherwise, error will come. Close it. See this. Now, uh, this is actually, you can see 256 bit by 4, how much? 64. 256 bit by 4. Each 4 bit, how many 4 bits are there in 256 bit? 64. So 64 hexadecimal characters are displayed here. This is my hash. Okay. Now, what I will do is, what you can do is, you can change the extension of this file. See, this hashing is happening only because the hashing is done, hash off. This is the, this is the hash. Similarly, I showed you 32 bit, no? That is what is but if you change, rename this one, you change the extension to dot pdf, what will happen? So try it anytime. Take a word file and change the extension, dot pdf, what will happen? The icon will change. It will give a warning and you will accept it. The icon will change. You will not, it, it is not readable. Understood? But still the file exists there, right? In the pdf symbol and so on. Now you take that one and do the hash. You will get the same thing. It will not change. So that means it is hashing the contents of this file. It is not taking the name of the file, the extension of the file, no, only the content. So I am only identifying the document based on its content. Okay. Understood what I am saying? Is that clear? Or for example, example, if I have some problem and I am challenging you to solve it, you will ask me, do you know first of all? Then what I will do is I will solve it. But I cannot show it to you because you have to solve it. Then uh, tomorrow you come, see, I'll, then third party, I don't want anybody else, okay, something like that. So what should I do? I'll take this solution, in a single letter I should not change, because today only I solved it, no? Before she is sitting there, I am solving it. I'll take the hash of this and give the hash value to you. How much? 64 characters. Take it and go, okay? And which hash function I am showing it to you. Tomorrow you will come and show that, so I am uh, unable to solve it. Understood. Then uh, what is the guarantee that... Uh, Today to next day, I am showing the solution. What is the guarantee that this is the same solution you did it yesterday? And see the hash value. Take this solution, hash it, hash it. Oh, it is the same hash value what you generated yesterday. That means you did not modify anything in that. Right? It is the same file, content, rename, or whatever you do. Understood? This message integrity. That's what is integrity. Message integrity, content integrity. In other words. Okay. What I am saying is understood. Right? Now I am not going to. Uh, modify anything you can try modifying you can open this file keep in mind 
you can open this file it is a word file now open this one letter you change delete or one letter you insert you give a space the document change the content change a bit change this content change now you find the hash now you find hash it is a different hash value it is a different message digest it is different obviously understood what I am saying so that is a simple very nice experiment that you can check it by yourself we have windows powershell powershell the command is very clearly existing here now you can so one more thing I will show you quickly uh, see I am going to change this to shivanand phd selection yeah then somebody is asking sir you do the next uh, uh, file what is the guarantee that it will be a different hash it is a different hash so compare it ok now uh, if you want to download it from the internet a particular file is uh, uh, what is the file uh, it is this one I will just copy it now for you just show it quickly to you so I will go to VLC Okay, it's a uh, general website. Okay, so uh, okay because it's zoomed, very difficult for me. Now I'll download on this. Where is the checks? This is the software. Okay, I'll download. When I download, somewhere below I should get the checksum. What the checksum? Right, it's downloading. Downloading VLC something and it's giving the checksum. Say display checksum. Yes, this is the checksum. Hexadecimal, uh, it is they told SHA 256. SHA 256. Okay. It is not SHA 384 or SHA 512. There is SHA 512 also. If you want larger checksum, you can take for higher security. Okay. The smaller and smaller the uh, tag, easily it can be replaced, cracked, or collision can happen. So I will copy this first of all. Let me copy. Now I will go back to the Windows thing. Okay. I am going to compare this because both are 256 bit. Both are 256. Is that okay? This one. This is 256. This is 256. What I got from the site for the VLC player. Let, let me assume that uh, this is corresponding to VLC player, what she gave to me. Again, I cannot get another VLC. It is in the folder, but I will take some time. Okay. Now I am going to compare this and that are same. I have already copied, right? It is easy. You have some commands. I can give you that uh, file also, which has commands. Now, what you can do is you can. Uh, do something like this, right? Uh, you store the you store in a particular uh, variable, okay? This particular hash, and you compare. That's easy to compare, right? See here, how I'm, how I'm going to do. It's uh, you start with dollar any uh, variable you are declaring here. It is uh, hs hash one equal to, okay? Or oh, maybe I'll do it like this to save time. Shivanand PhD selection. See, this will be computed. I want it to be stored in uh, something called hash one. Is that okay? Uh, that means get the file hash of that file. If you want a specific, uh, if you want to say a specific algorithm, you will write dash capital A or small a, it doesn't matter. Algorithm dash algorithm SHA. It doesn't matter small or big, okay. 256. No need to write this because default 256. If you want 512, I'll write here 512. That will be nice. But just to show that I can specify the algorithm also. So it will take get to file has using this particular algorithm, this file. Done. Okay. And then here I wrote equal to something like dollar hash one. It will store inside that. I'm going to store the same thing because it's a previous file, it will not change. So let, let us see any error. No, it has stored. No error. That means it is the same thing. Guys, it is the same thing here. Whatever I got here, that will be stored inside now here, so that it will be easy. I cannot easily by comparing. It's not easy. 64 characters, character by character, I have to compare, right? That's what I'm saying. So now I will. Uh, I'm going to store hash two. Actually, I should say get to file hash and find the hash of that software which I downloaded. Okay, I did not download any software now. I think it's automatically downloaded. But still, what I'll do is directly I'll store inside this. I copied something, right? Put in quotations. Ah, yeah, it's, it's, it's stored. See here. Directly 
instead of get file hash, I already know the hash put in quotes, store it inside this. Okay. Now this equal to this or this not equal to this. So what is the output? Binary output will come. What is that? True or false, right? So let's see. It is uh, dollar hash one dot equals. Easy to remember this. Okay. I also remember the same way. So one or two times you type, you will understand this. Okay, there are this is not not only one way. You can also code or write your own script in PowerShell and use this. Okay, hash the first file dot equals this one. See, let's see if any error will come or not. It's false. If it is coming true, I am in trouble because that's not happened. So it's false. Both are different, right? You can see here already they are different by. You can see by our. You can write the scripts by your own way, and you can do this. Okay, this is already available uh, in the internet. So this code I have used before for you, so that I can show it to you. Now you can do so many experiments. Take files, change it, change its extension, change its name. Hash will not change. Change its content or attach an extra whatever thing with that. So some people intentionally will attach some malware, right? It's change, but we do not know. So you have, you can check like this. So that's the important. Of Important thing. So I skip to the next one because of lack of time. So what I can do is uh, one important application I want to tell you about uh, hash functions. You are using it. So this is fine, right? This is a modification detection code. No authentication. Understood? Why no authentication? The authentication is provided by the website itself. You are trusting the vlc.com. Directly you are going to the website, right? Now what authentication? You trust the website, then only you going down there. There is no requirement of any authentication. It's not data authentication. It's a modification detection code. You are going to the website, downloading it, and checking whether it is modified or not. Okay, this is a nice example for modification detection code. Okay, message authentication code is different. Uh, I have to use some secret with that. That means, how do I generate? In simple words, I'll tell you instead of uh, elaborating it. If you want to generate modification uh, message authentication code, the difference is. Take the VLC player, take a secret password or key, concatenate, hash of this is equal to something. Now this is an authentication because, or data authentication because, data means it's VLC player, okay. Data authentication because only I can do that, nobody else. Only I can do, do that. Why? Because only I know the key, so, or maybe my group knows the key, the symmetry key, so it's a data authentication code. But in this case, it's not required. Websites not required, right? So websites generally, uh, system administrator or whoever, when they are loading this one, they will they can generate by themselves. So they write a code for generating the MDCs. That's the difference between MDC and MAC. People generally get confused. Uh, what is the difference? Okay. So uh, what else? So these things I will uh, avoid. Uh, so this is something like this Mac. It's a Mac. Okay, you can see from below there is a key going inside. Understood? So hash function can be used for generating MDCs. It can be used for generating Mac, provided you put a password or key there. Right? And one more thing is a, a very important application of hash functions. So uh, you are very uh, you are uh, uh, trying to understand the preliminaries of crypto, right? So obviously a very important application. Knowingly or unknowingly you are using it. Okay, you use uh, this has functions okay for storing the passwords in your system. You know, anytime how your passwords are stored in your laptops, how the passwords are stored in uh, the database of some servers like Flipkart or maybe Amazon, okay, billions, maybe millions of users, their credentials, their email IDs, sometimes their phone numbers, their address, everything is stored somewhere, right, in some database. Is that correct what I am saying? Now, if that is the case, then passwords are very important credential. No? So, of course, it is in the database of a particular server, but some of the other day, uh, a data breach may happen. It's happening every day. In 2003, also, you can see many data breaches happening for some selected website. Right? Data breaches are happening. Obviously, this uh, database or the control or maybe a copy of database goes into the wrong hands. The hackers, where they sell it to cyber criminals, right? This is happening. What will happen if uh, a particular website in which you are registered as a member, your username, password, everything is there, and it is going in the whole password database file is going into the wrong hands? 
will happen what will you do you sometimes will not know that that is very important thing unless when it comes into the news you will know but so if the plain text if the plain text is stored so this password is stored in a plain text format it's gone so there is a table let us assume like there is a table where the password is stored in a plain text format okay something like this you able to see this username so many usernames so many passwords this is gone hack some issue with the websites right uh, it can happen right so many sort of attacks are there maybe uh, some issues with the application web, web applications obviously you can get into the database this happened and this is true nobody is going to keep like this any file password file even your laptops will not put passwords like this you can have more than one user no here more than one password understood what i'm saying it's not possible it's, it's okay it's possible but what we are going to do is instead of doing like this the better thing to do is take this and this password don't store the password store the hash of the password inside hash this and put the hash value here how many 64 characters no everybody shout one please understood everybody shout one 160 bits why so then that many characters so take a hash function and hash it store it here now what will happen you know go to your laptop immediately type type the username bob type your password password this is a default password no any people don't change their password okay. password 1 2 3 and so on so social engineering so password you type password immediately it goes this password will be the operating system what it will does it is it will find the hash of this password because password the password password is not stored in the system and how can it give you authenticate it will authenticate you so what it will do is it will find the hash of this and the hash of this is always unique if you don't change this then it will compare with the hashed value which is already stored in the table so that table i'll show you it will be in the it is in the next slide this, this is one all the passwords previously i showed no the bobs hash value is like this now hash it now see compare it the comparison verified you are giving access you are you are being given, given access laptops only four users three users five users millions of users for web servers right millions of users it's gone is gone everything is gone now the problem is when data breaches happen now you are safe right oh my password is not in plain text format nobody will understand my passwords even somebody will attack the server and get back this password a uh, file my username is gone is in plain text my phone numbers may go but my password is not gone if password is not gone he cannot log in to my account but the problem is still there is a problem a very uh, good hacker what he can do is he can pre compute the table okay a table he can pre compute like this what he will do is he will uh, so, so much of computational power is required okay let us assume that he is a computationally uh, strong adversary having enough space and so on then he will create millions of usernames millions of common passwords because we people know what type of passwords they use right password 1 2 3 that is this millions and billions i'll create and i'll take standard hash functions and hash it and create a very big table the the, the, the table of data maybe 20 gb or 50 gb is available in the internet 50 gb 60 gb some people will sell it for you also okay you can buy it also now that only you have you should have a space some computation for offline computation power for creating this understood now what will happen that is with you common passwords are hashed now whenever you get a password file like this corresponding to a website after hacking now what i'll do is i will just do a table lookup at least one hashed value is matching with any of the hashed value in my created big table understood what i'm saying if there is a match then bobs password is password okay but corresponding to some other name i got the same hash value that means in my table it's not password it's not corresponding to password it's something else x y z 1 2 3 its hash value corresponding to the hash function is this and what i'll do i use that password to log in it will give you it will give you access because when it is hashing it is equal to the same thing right guys when i hash when i give that x y z 1 2 3 as a password which also have the same hash value this one 
it will verify it is verified and will give login access no so this uh, attack is called let's say rainbow table attack so this table is called rainbow table okay you will get uh, uh, the rainbow tables uh, already offline created tables okay just it's a lookup table but you want more and more again there is see whenever there is some issue again there is a solution for that people find solution right cyber security experts will find a solution okay the solution is something called uh, this is a password database using hash functions okay see the hash functions i, I will stop maybe one two, one or two minutes so using rainbow tables see here so what is the solution for that is see here the solution is salt so the name salt salt and pepper is there salt in the name of salt and pepper in cryptography salt means take the password password is uh, let me in this is the password put some salt to it okay salt in the sense of random value that's the meaning okay it's a funny thing put some salt to it before you hash so generate some random data attach it and then hash it very difficult now creating a, a rainbow table now it's not only that you take commonly known passwords to hash you will also generate some random data also to that now creating such a big uh, rainbow table it's completely difficult it, it consumes lot of amount of the attacker's time understood what i'm saying so this way i create now in the password table what are there you know this salt is also stored in the password table as a plain text and its hashed value this fellow also will be there so if you want i'll show in the last slide uh, this one oh this one yeah so that's it this one this two. okay this two are not equal i'm putting an extra salt this one and the salt together are stored okay so now when i log in just as a user i should only give this i don't need to keep in mind salt i'll only give let me in when i give it goes in the os will take this particular salt which is attached it with my username takes that salt with the password whatever i type it will attach find the hash this is not wrong so only you remember this uh, password nothing else so this is uh, this will increase the computational complexity of the hacker because he creates a big table no so then it's very, very difficult not only the common passwords he also should uh, generate the random uh, data like this salt so a little bit more you can increase by something called pepper okay so now you are going to add a little bit more to the data it is password is the last one okay i'll stop password some salt random data it's unique for the user keep in mind the salt is unique for me another user another password the salt is for him unique it will not change okay then it is stored also in the table then take a pepper also attach at the last so password salt and pepper concatenate and hash it and this this pepper is secret value it's like a key okay a little bit more to increase the complexity they are putting the secret value and this important point is where to keep the secret value it will not be in the uh, password database the cyber hackers will not get that it should be stored somewhere maybe in some web application code maybe even it's not secure you have to keep somewhere else okay in some other database or wherever it can be accessed automatically so there are some means or ways of storing the pepper pepper is not in the password table but salt is there salt is a random data so just that said i'll stop here because of lack of time so however uh, just i want to tell you that the applications of hash functions right, are a, a lot wide where it is used for providing message integrity message not only message integrity data authenticity also okay so both we are using hash functions and the conclusion is not only hash function there are other other methods of generating uh, providing a service message integrity not only hash function so take some time for understanding that okay this is enough so that's about hash functions and authentication i'll stop if you have any doubts i'll take salt is a random data that is generated of some fixed size maybe 100 bits or maybe 120 bits or 128 bits or something like that so when you add this password with the salt with the salt and do the hashing okay so you get some output right that's the same same like okay but this is important while somebody is trying to create some rainbow tables okay for attacking those rainbow tables contains 
all usual commonly used passwords millions in number will generate and find its corresponding uh, hashed values. But now there is another challenge for him because the particular website or server is using an extra random value also with the password and hashing. Now to create the rainbow table, he should also choose random values. Okay, understood what I am saying. So otherwise, simply taking common uh, passwords will not be enough. Understood what I am saying? That means he should generate so many, even more passwords, more different types of passwords. Not only the meaningful passwords, non-meaningful passwords also he has to take so that uh, uh, for creating such a big database of hashed values. It's only for increasing the complexity of the attacker, he is using rainbow attack over this uh, obtained password file. Okay, that's why they are using. Uh, this particular salt and uh, generally pepper is not required but uh, uh, this is only a concept where if somebody wants a particular uh, 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 web server or some particular uh, security providing people want it to add extra security to this then they put one more concatenation which is a secret value but there is a problem always whenever you put a secret value why because where do you store this again you cannot store in the password table if you put, you call it a secret table and put in the password table, it does not make sense. Somebody is getting the password table, he got the secret value, no? Okay. So, that is why you, then, then if you use the pepper, then you have to think about where to store it. Because whenever you give access, no, you give the password. I will give, let me in. My system will take the password, add the pepper because, sorry, salt, because salt is already in the system under my username. No? We will take the salt, add it, hash it and see, oh, it is correct. Understood what I am saying? Now, there is another important thing, not only that, if myself and Saurabh have the same passwords, okay, but under our usernames, the salts are different. Understood? And so, the same passwords we, if we choose also, its corresponding inside hash values are different. Otherwise, what will happen? The hackers will understand that, oh, these two are same hash values. That means, these two users are using the same password or maybe my, my different account can be like that, no? Two different accounts in the same uh, web page. Two accounts is using the same password. That's an information leak, right? So that way also salts are very useful. So for randomizing it, when you see something, it will confuse you. For randomizing salts are also used. Okay, particularly uh, to randomize whom? The attackers, right? So that's it. Any other questions? No, you hash value is another. Uh, you may get it, you can try into Windows uh, system you go, there is something called SAM file, okay, go and try to, it is not, directly you cannot access the hash file, you can use some techniques to access the hash file, you get the hash file, you go uh, come here and type the hash file, okay, and that is again being hashed, no, the process will not end, when you type the hash file, inside what is the problem, whatever you type it will hash, it will hash it, when you hash it, it is something else junk, it is not in the table, it will not give access to you, it is a different message, it is different password. What I am saying will not give access to you. For what? Exactly to randomize the whatever output you have so that somebody who is trying to attack this one, they will, they will not get a clear uh, cut meaning or something like that. So, like I told you, you know, I have same account but same password but different uh, hash value, right? And also to create this uh, uh, rainbow table, it is traditionally difficult also. He uh, has to generate so many uh, passwords and its corresponding salts to generate hash value. I will stop here. There is only a very small amount of information and lots and lots are connected. Okay. Pepper is unique for the whole password database. An optional thing only, it's not uh, required. But once nowadays, I can tell you that uh, if you take a large size uh, salt, it's secure actually. Salt should be 128 bits or more. So how many salts will be there? Two raised to 128 salts will be there. That's what I'm saying. So the salt size is also significantly larger. It is it will give you enough security. But still, people come with different ideas. No? If you want to put one more secret value and so on. But the problem is uh, when you put the when you call the next uh, parameter secret, where do you hide it? Secret means it should be secret, right? So people say that you can put that secret value in some particular web application code, but the attacker knows somewhere in a web application code, uh, he will search there also. Or otherwise, where do you put it? Somewhere you have to put it, right? 
so that uh, we cannot manually give the salt, sorry, pepper. So that's an optional thing, but still you can explore it. It's a nice thing to explore. Okay, how this pepper is maintained? Is any website is using a pepper or not? Salt is big. See, nowadays every website is using salt. Keep in mind. Without salt, it's over. Rainbow table attack. Salt is one of the best tools. Only the thing is, salt you have to take bigger size. It is secure. There is no disadvantages, only the to get an advantage over this rainbow attack, they have introduced salt. Uh, only the thing is, uh, you have to generate random uh, value and attach with the password. I think that is not a big problem, right? Uh, the uh, data, database has enough space to say, store all this information, okay? There is no negative from that side because storage is not a problem in web servers or in a laptop. Any users, any number of salts you can store. Okay, only there is a benefit that it is resisting or to some extent it will resist the rainbow tablet. Okay. 